we're going to look at a nice approach to the Pythagorean theorem that comes from, well, I've seen it actually a lot of places, but maybe the best place to find what will follow most directly is from a 1989 article of the College Math Journal. Okay, so let's start over here with our right triangle. So we've got side lengths A, B, and hypotenuse length C. So obviously we're trying to show that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so I put my right angle down here, and now I'm going to color code the other angles so that when we talk about angles being congruent, we can simply use this color coding. So I'm going to call this angle over here magenta. So this is the angle with measure magenta, if you will. And then up here, I'm going to say that this is angle with measure blue. Okay, good. So we've got our magenta angle, our blue angle, and then kind of nominally, we've got this right angle down here, which is in green. Okay, now where are we going to go from here? Well, now what I'd like to do is put a line segment that is parallel to this side with side length B. So let's maybe put it right across right here. Although in the back of your mind, you should think that it's kind of small. So since you're thinking that it's kind of small, it would actually be way up here near the top, but just to make the picture look nice, let's put it right here. Okay, great. And then, well, let's observe that this angle that we've made here is a right angle again. So I'm actually gonna maybe put this dotted because we're gonna uh, not really need this so much. And then also we know that this angle over here has measure magenta as well. And that's simply because whenever you put parallel line segments like this into a triangle, what do you get? Well, you get a smaller triangle that's similar to the original triangle, which means it has the same angles. Now, well, let's put some names to the lengths of the sides of the smaller triangle that we've built. So we'll call this B prime, so that's the length of this, and then maybe I'll like shade these a little bit in this peach color as well. And so this smaller length here is A prime, and then this smaller length here is C prime. Okay, so I think that's uh, looking pretty good at the moment. Now, where are we gonna go from here? Well, next up what I wanna do is take a line segment from this angle right here, making the right angle of the smaller triangle, and push it over here to the hypotenuse in a way that we create a right angle with the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna look like. So I think this looks pretty good. That's about a right angle here. So since it's a right angle, I can put it in green like I've been doing for my right angles. And then, well, since this is a right angle, over to the side is a right angle. But then since this is magenta, we know that in order to complete a triangle with right angle and magenta, we need blue angle. Okay, good. So we've got blue angle here. And then we also have, well, let's see, it'll be magenta angle over here. And then next up, I'm going to take this line segment with length C prime and break it into two pieces based off of this uh, yellow line segment that has pushed to intersect it with it perpendicularly. So I'll maybe call this length right here X, and I'll call this length right here Y. So we know that X plus Y is equal to C prime just based off of our construction. And now from this picture, I'm gonna make an observation having to do with all of the similar triangles on the board. So let's write it over here. So we've got the following observation. And maybe I'll just make a list of similar triangles and I'll do it via picture. So I'll write it like this. So the following are similar, great. So let's start with our first, which is the largest triangle. This is the one with all white sides. 
Okay, nice. So recall that that had side length A, B, and C, and then it had right here, blue angle here, and then magenta angle here. Okay, so that one was similar to the one with all uh, peach sides. So let's see, let's draw that down as well. So we've got this, and the way we laid that out, the blue and the magenta angles were in the same spot, and we had length A prime, uh, B prime, and C prime. Great, and then we've got these two smaller ones which were built out of the peach triangle. And observe that they've got two peach colored sides and one yellow side. But the yellow side is opposite the magenta angle in this lower one and it's opposite the blue angle in the other one. Okay, so let's get pictures of those on the board as well. Okay, so there's our triangles over there with all of the appropriate side lengths built in. And notice I rotated and reflected the small ones just to make them look like the larger ones here. Now we can apply the similarity of these triangles to get some equality of proportions of side lengths. So let's write that over here. So let's first notice that if we take x over b, so let's see what x over b will be. So that's the bottom side of this triangle divided by the bottom side of this triangle. So that means that's going to be equal to b prime over c. Okay, great. So b prime over c. And well, let's also notice that if we take y over a, so what will that, that be? So that's the kind of left-hand side of this triangle divided by the left-hand side of this triangle. So that's going to be the same thing as a prime over c for kind of the same reason. So here we've got a prime over c. And what's nice about putting all of these triangles in the orientation like we have over here is it's pretty simple to, you know, produce these equalities of proportions of side lengths based off of the similarity of the triangles. Okay, so now let's cross multiply and see what we get. So observe that we're going to have b times b prime is equal to cx, and then we're also going to have a times a prime is equal to c times y. Again, by cross multiplying those two. Good. And now what we'll do is take these two equations and add them. So what happens if we add these two equations? Well, we're going to have a times a prime plus b times b prime is equal to, well, that's going to be c times x plus y, just factoring a c out of the left-hand side. But let's look over here, and I think we observed this earlier, that c prime is equal to x plus y. So we can replace that x plus y with c prime. So here we have a times a prime plus b times b prime is equal to c times c prime. But now to finish this thing off, what we can do is take this line segment which has length b prime and push it down to our side of our triangle down here that has side length b. But of course that's going to make a prime coincide with a and c prime coincide with c. So in fact what we're kind of doing here is taking the limit as the small triangle becomes the large triangle. But what's that going to do over here? Well that's going to turn a prime into a, b prime into b, and c prime into c, leaving us with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is of course the statement for the classical Pythagorean theorem, and that's a good place to stop.